Okay, so I think it's time to start. So everybody show you is uh, very, very interesting to be um, more powerful, to do better things, but uh, I'm just doing the opposite way. I'm just go back in time and uh, have fun with Blender and not working much more than the other. So uh, what I did, I'm a shader writer teacher. I am teaching how to write shaders in OSL, mainly open, open shading language. And I was preparing a strong exercise uh, with a generation of geometry inside the shaders. It's nice and um, mostly spheres. And I was playing with spheres and then I, I think about what changed 3D about 30 years ago, which was the jungler in, 19, in 1986. Uh, so here's the conference, here's the result. Uh, what we are going to do during this half an hour, uh, at first, uh, what was 3D in 1986? It was 30 years ago. Who is more than 30 here? Yeah, with less? Okay, the others. <laughs> so, uh, some of you didn't know this time and uh, didn't like the jungler, uh, how it happens and why it happens. Uh, it's, uh, we, we talk about what it changed in 3D. Uh, how I came to remake this jungler, why? Uh, and also a little bit about programming for being fast and not really efficient. <laughs> and what is the future? We don't know yet. So in 1986, uh, the jungler happens. Uh, before watching it, the original one, uh, we have to go back in time and think what was 1986 from the point of view of computer graphics and in the point of view of uh, this year, in fact. Uh, let's start what uh, is now using the most of 3D. Uh, what the most visible part of 3D today is movie pictures and video games. So let's start with movie pictures. Ah, 10 years before Blender. Movie picture in 1986, so you remember them, I think. They're not mostly the best. Uh, no effects, no effects, no effects, no effects. Oh, some, but not really. Uh, as you can see, things change a lot. Now, if you are looking at the chart of this year, you will see all film using 3D. During this time, 3D was a really, really expensive thing not easy to do, and, uh, and so expensive that it was near impossible to use it in movie. Uh, one second was uh, near impossible to do. Now, doing what you, one second of 3D, you are doing it every day with Blender. At that time, it means uh, many weeks of computation, many weeks of rendering, and programming, programming, and programming a lot. Uh, for video games, some of you remember Zelda. The first one, <laughs> no 3D. Uh, this year was the first 3D game available, which was the car simulation from Atari. Uh, someone remember it, so surely it was a coin machine and you play about 10 minutes and then add coins again. And uh, it was very heavy machine and the graphics were really woof. It was also the first year of the Sega Mega Drive. Yes, really cool. And uh, usually not really, just uh, blocky things. I, uh, Zelda is still alive, indeed. <laughs> so, uh, what was the computer available at this time? Oh, and 3D, sorry. I <laughs> and what was 3D at this time? Uh, a big turn become, happened in 3D with Pixar was doing Luxo Junior, which was their first really finished film, and uh, to show to public who don't know about 3D. Uh, it's the first time 3D is shown to public, to anyone. Uh, other 3D were just like uh, black background, really rough rendering, and uh, not a lot of animation, usually one second, and here was the longest 3D ever made, which was a video clip from, uh, from uh, I don't remember. 
Yeah, they are straight. <laughs> Money for nothing. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. It was the longest production ever done in 3D. And here are the computer. What was computers in 1986? For uh, young people to understand, I write in gigahertz <laughs> and in gigabyte. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> Uh, it, it was slow. <laughs> Mostly it was slow. What is interesting is that there is not enough color to make pictures and not enough rendering power to render pictures. Uh, on Macintosh, you just have one color, two, black and white. On PC, you have just 12. The most performance was Amiga computer, but with a low resolution, not video ready. Indeed, it was used in video. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so it happens that the jungler came to uh, the Amiga computer just because he had the most color available. Uh, I didn't talk about, uh, say, uh, SGI, Silicon Graphics. Uh, the oldest of you remember SGI. <laughs> SGI was so expensive, and it was the first uh, workstation available at that time, uh, mostly for real-time rendering, and not yet uh, with such nice software as Alias or Wavefront of SoftImage, who all disappeared. <laughs> so, uh, so how, what was the goal, in fact? Uh, at that time, we had a very, very strong example of uh, something really new. It starts with DTP, you know, publishing. Uh, with the arrival of Macintosh, people start to think, oh, what we did on supercomputer or very, very expensive computer could be made on small computer on a desktop. And it's the beginning of thinking of uh, really bringing high-level science and, uh, and computation power and rendering to people, to normal people, to you. Uh, DTP was the first to succeed, and many, many persons were looking what will be the next. Uh, there were someone working on Photoshop at that time, uh, thinking, oh, what about uh, digital photography? It was really oh, a pure utopia project. Okay, now it's okay. And uh, there is some people thinking about 3D, the most rendering intensive and computer intensive things available to do. I can show you this. There is an interesting picture. It's a Cray 1. Uh, Cray 1 was the most uh, powerful available computer during this year. And to show how it is powerful, they do a rendering picture of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, it was just impossible to any mind to think that such power could be available on a small computer, on a computer on a desktop. And what happened? Uh, of course, it will happen. It would happen. But when? Nobody knows. Uh, what happened was the jungler. So, back. Sorry for my presentation. The jungler. Uh, the jungler arrived late in 1986. And it's a full rendering picture. It has so many firsts that I didn't know how to... I, I think I'm forgetting some. Uh, it's the first time a personal computer is rendering picture. Usually they were just display, not rendering. It's the first time it's an animation. It's the first Delta animation show to public. Yes, there were no Delta animation. You know Delta animation, it's uh, what you call MKV on your PC. <laughs> you know. Um, and also, it's the first time that there is pure ray tracing uh, image on computer, on small computer. All pictures I show you, none of them are ray traced. There is some kind of ray tracing here with Ray-S, the first version of Ray-S, but Ray-S is not a full ray tracer. And here it was a full ray tracer. So I can show you the original picture, video. It's very, very small. Okay. Wow, I spent hours looking at it. <laughs> it was... Oh, Delta, yeah. Okay, wow. Um, 
it's completely uh, conform to a graphical variable at that time with, okay, <laughs> square floor. One strange thing is sky, as you could see, there is no sky on any picture there. So it was really unusual to see sky in 3D. And pure ray tracing with reflection, shadows, and specular. It seems really incredible. Uh, look, here you have no reflection, and it's Pixar, no uh, specular, and uh, no shadows. Okay, here there is some, no shadows. Okay, so it was really a strong shock. And what happened is that it's so much a shock that everybody say, oh, now it's possible to do 3D. In fact, we mostly don't realize it, but we are surfing the shock wave of the jungler. Without the jungler, 3D would come to, uh, to our computers, but maybe two or three years after, we don't know. But at that time, the jungler showed to everyone, oh yes, it is possible. And so we can start working on 3D software on PC and on microcomputer. It was really a big change. Uh, on the year after the jungler, 1987, there was about three commercial 3D software available on microcomputer. It was really a big change. Without the jungler, we have to wait maybe two years, maybe five years, we don't know. It needs someone uh, to, tell, to, uh, to say to us, it's possible. So it was a fun, and uh, when I saw it for the first time, I didn't realize it. I just realized, oh, okay, I'm 16, I want to do that when I will be big, <laughs> when I will be adult, and, and I work for it. So it changed my life also, not only computer life. Uh, so why I, I came back to this jungler? At first, um, at first I was working for my teaching, for my OSL teaching, how to include geometry inside the shader. The easiest way is to put sphere. Sphere are really useful. For example, it was the goal of the exercise to put bubble in champagne. As I'm French, we are drinking a lot of champagne, sometimes some beer for Belgian. And, uh, and so I want to make a shader that is putting bubble in champagne. But we have to generate spheres. So I start the phosphor project here. Uh, phosphor means full of sphere on render. On render. It was just a nickname. And uh, it takes any geometry and it puts sphere inside. So here is a result with a famous dragon. Uh, it puts sphere inside and so it's just a shader. There is absolutely no sphere in this scene. In this scene. It's just a shader. You put it on your object and it renders sphere inside. And many spheres, thousands of spheres, millions of spheres, and uh, as spheres are not in memory, just rendering on the fly, you can have billions of spheres if you want. And so billions of spheres, and uh, more spheres, and spheres again. Uh, it is a RGB cube. So I have a video for RGB cube. Yes, I have one. Really? Yeah, RGB cube. Uh, so it's full blender with this shader, changing object into spheres. And, uh, just a cube, <laughs> just RGB cube. And here is a one million sphere cube. Uh, so it's a kind of a generation you have to put a small ray tracer inside to see where sphere, to handle the buffer inside your shader and so on. And as you can see, you can have really nice results with just spheres. And with just a shader and with just a cube. In fact, in this, in this scene, there is just a cube. No, oh, six polygon. Okay. <laughs> and uh, you can play with others. So. I start. So, spheres. <laughs> uh, 
then I th think about the jungler. I say, okay, jungler was full of seer. I want to do that. I have my full weekend. I can have fun. I can have fun with OSL. Let's start doing the jungler. I did it in two days. Okay, it, it was not a lot of work. Uh, this is more than two days, but the jungler just two days. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is the model of the jungler? It, it was really, really difficult to find the model of the jungler. Uh, what interesting thing about the jungler? It was really, it also one other first from the jungler. It's the first uh, open source ray tracer, so you can easily find the source of the uh, of the original jungler. And so you can find how it was modeled. It was just a nightmare. And uh, fortunately, I found someone who already did this job. Meat fighter, I don't know who he is. I don't know where he is. I just know this website and it's impossible to find the coordinate or who he is. But on this website, he is really studying how to redo modelization of the jungler. So, okay, I use it, I think it a lot. But I don't know him, or her, I don't know. Uh, so I use this, what it does, and it does it very, very well and very efficiently. Uh, the jungler is about 200 spheres only. Then, writing the renderer of the jungler. It, it was the fun part. I would write a pure ray tracing renderer inside OSL. Uh, the main goal was to have it in real time, so it's not a full renderer, it's really optimized just for the jungler. So I want pure ray tracing and nothing new, <laughs> nothing real available actually. Uh, no soft shadow, no motion blur, not even a fung. Uh, the specular of the jungler was just on off, specular, not specular. <laughs> so, uh, so really, I want to have the same look of the original jungler. And second, I want to make it as fast as possible. Uh, I use no sphere sorting. There is just 200 spheres, so there is no geometry sorting. I use geometry sorting and sphere sorting for RGB cube or uh, phosphor because I can handle millions or billions of spheres. So I have to sort them. Here, there is no sphere sorting. It's fast enough. We don't need. Uh, someone from Intel told me that I could break it in two because on Intel, it is faster with 100 sphere. Okay. For next version, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I use hierarchical rendering. What is hierarchical rendering? Um, first, no camera. Why no camera? Who can I do rendering with no camera? Uh, just because I'm using Cycle and Blender. So I can get the camera information from Cycle and Blender. I don't have to generate my own camera. I'm just using the ray from Cycles. So that's why there is no ray sorting. Cycles is doing a very, very good job in ray sorting. I don't need to do it again. So I use the ray from Cycles and hierarchical rendering. Hierarchical rendering is a way to do, to stop rendering as fast as possible. So to sort tasks to do for doing the most complex first. So if I don't need it, I go to the other one. So here is my algorithm. Yeah. At first, what happens if a ray is colliding a sphere? If not, I just render the sky or the floor. Uh, one thing, I do not do collide with the oops. I do not do ray collision with the floor. The floor is purely an illusion. There is no floor in my scene. It's just a checker. Uh, it's a checker written in OSL. My renderer is OSL compatible. <laughs> so <laughs> I can use OSL shader inside OSL shader. Uh, if I find a sphere, I'm doing some zip buffer to find if it's first one. If it's the first one, I'm rendering. If not, I stop. And then everything I do is, is it is okay or no, I stop. So I stop rendering as fast as possible. And uh, what is really fast to do with a computer, everybody know it, it's doing nothing. Yeah? 
You agree? <laughs> Computer really fast when doing nothing. So that's why I choose this way to render. Do nothing if there is something wrong. And so it's going fast. And so I compute if there is shadow, and if there is, if I'm in shadow, I do not compute in render lighting. Uh, it's a strange thing. This one I'm not very proud. It means that I can have only one light source because if I'm in shadow of the first light, I do not render the other light. So I have just one light source. If it's a mirror, I go, I run again the software. So I can have only 100% mirror. No dull, no uh, shiny things. Just 100% mirror. And uh, just two materials, one with specular, one without. So it's really, really, really small <laughs> renderer. Uh, I don't know how many lines, but it's really, really small. That's why it's so fast. So let's start Blender. Yeah. Ah, I think you know this software. <laughs> just a little bit. Yes. Uh, node editor, I, I need cycles with open shading language. I need the cube and use node. Then I'm adding a script node. And, and, and where it is, uh, somewhere. Somewhere there. Okay, and here is the jungler. Uh, not a lot of button. I don't like shaders with a lot of buttons. <laughs> so, uh, okay, rendering. And, 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 suspense. Yeah. The jungler is here. <laughs> you can zoom in and see all, uh, oops, uh, I'm outside. I'm inside and you see the reflections, true reflections, there is four recursions. True reflection, true shadow, and uh, you can have, if you change the scale, woo -hoo -hoo, you can have a very, very small jungler. It's fun. And so you can see all the shadow of the jungler. And what is interesting also, it's animated, and you can have time here. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you are. You have real-time jungler. Uh, it's fun. Yes, it's fun. <laughs> I like it. The, the floor is not a real one. If, if I'm going under the floor, you could see rendering errors. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but indeed, it's fast. Uh, yeah. Hope you like it. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, you can download it on my website uh, at the end. Uh, any question about the renderer? No. Everybody know how to do that? Yes. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, did you get contacted by the Amiga community online about this? But there's still some <laughs> hardcore people who use uh, Amiga or uh, oh, I, the original I, maker I of didn't this? Have, I didn't have any feedback about the Amiga community, ah. unfortunately. Let me make uh, some more publicity about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, do it. Thank you. I, I was the guy who bought an Amiga in 1985, and, and I saw this demo. I was so mind blown. And it was not even <laughs> rendered in real time, it was playing back, right? And yeah, even the exactly. playback, it was already like, <laughs> it's like in our hands in a little computer you can do some, something the big studios in Hollywood are not even doing yet so that sense of power right? that's, why that's one of the exists. things that made me get into 3D this little thing, this juggler so. 
Uh, I only have good memories. Yeah, yeah Thank so you. <laughs> nice, really. It's, uh, many of us start 3D because of the jungle, I think, really. Oh, I send uh, an email to Eric Graham, uh, but I didn't receive uh, any answer. I think I'm, I have not the right email. So, uh, yeah? Is there any way to f uh, get your um, sphere shader? Uh, uh, yes, of course. I, I, have, uh, I did it really fast in two days, and so there is no comments. So I'm not proud of that. <laughs> I need to write some comments on it, really. Is it possible to take the sphere shader and use it for structured point clouds? So could I, for example, use some point cloud data and render that with the, with the sphere oh. shader? Uh, it's really roof. It's really made for the jungle. If you want to use it, the reflection do not reflect anything else than the jungle world. The other shader, the ah, the other fear shader. Uh, I, uh, actually, I'm working on it because it's kind of slow. Uh, I use uh, to work on a big workstation with about uh, 50, something like 50 cores. And so it appears to me to be fast, but when I try on my laptop, okay, I, I can show it to you, indeed. Uh, yes, a lot of mess. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's this one. Yes, and uh, a lot of buttons because it's not yet optimized for users. And as you can see, you can have sphere inside your object. Um, okay, and or you can have a different color with And also, different size, of course. Yeah, oh, too, ma too many spheres. Uh, I, I have to end over overwriting. Yes, spheres. Uh, just with a, a cube. Uh, it's, uh, the main problem is uh, speed. Because it, if you use particles or things like that, you will be faster because uh, it's uh, cycles and the full blender structures that handle the rendering of spheres. Here, it's just an exercise to have small spheres or spheres inside a really necessary object, like uh, bubble champagne, where you do not need a bubble simulation for just having a glass of champagne or a glass of beer. Uh, it's more in this way. With few spheres, uh, we can handle millions of spheres, but really, if, you're doing, if you are doing millions of spheres with particle system, it will be faster to render. So, mm. yeah. A any, any more question? Did you try it on a GPU? No, because it's, I use cycle and open shading language, and uh, cycle and open shading language are not using uh, GPU. <laughs> Uh, it's, uh, it's time. <laughs> it's, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Especially this is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> okay, next one. And here, so I'm going. A little break. Perfect. That's the cable is a bit short.